We're rolling. Hello. Now this is the most gangster tripod layout I've ever had. I don't have any cameras here. I don't have any SD cards. So I'm filming on my iPhone, which is on top of a water bottle, which is on top of a drone case. And I'm doing what I can to film this video for you guys because I really wanted to do it. And uh, Erwan, who edits these videos, has all of my cameras and SD cards. And it didn't feel safe for us kind of like trying to exchange those because I am still positive to COVID. And so I don't want to risk it. But today is a very simple video. I posted on Instagram saying that you guys could send me all your little uh, nicks and knacks about COVID, like little questions you may have. And I'm going to try and answer some of them. As I said on Instagram, I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm not pretending to be an expert and I do not have all the answers. All I know is that I have been through being tested positive to COVID and having the quarantine time and all that jazz. So maybe there's something you can learn through my experience. So I'm just going to give you my honest, uh, unfiltered answer to some of your questions you sent in. And hopefully maybe we can use this platform to help educate people better on something which seems to be kind of all over the place. And there are so many rumors, answers, you know, wrong information, right information that we don't really know what to do with it. So someone who's lived through it might as well use the platform and use it for something cool. Anyways, the sun glare is, may get pretty nuts at some point, bear with me. It's just, I didn't have any lights or anything, so I decided to just sit in the sun and that would probably work. Right, questions. What did it feel like? Felt unpleasant, I'm not gonna lie. I had a headache where I was in bed for like three days and then it was coming in waves. So there were like days where I was completely out of it and then the next day I, I felt fine and then it would come back two days later and then nothing and, and feeling unwell kind of lasted 10 days or so. But, you know, I see a lot of people saying, you know, oh, it's just it's just a flu. Yeah, it's not, you know, like I wasn't in a really seriously bad way at all. Um, but I was unwell and it was like a seriously violent flu and one that lasted quite quite long. What medication did you take? Uh, HCQ. Now, so I took actually just uh, paracetamol um, and I was taking vitamin C and I was just eating healthy and kind of just trying to live and, and sleep and do everything as healthy as I could. So... Um, nothing too intense, I didn't have to go to the hospital, I stayed home uh, and just took paracetamol really when my headache was getting really bad. How bad was illness compared to a normal flu and would you go on holiday again anytime soon? Illness, well as I said it was like a, I mean for sure it is relatable to a flu the way you feel, but that kind of like, I don't want to make it, again I don't want to over dramatize things and I don't want to make it sound too brutal um, but I also don't want to kind of play it down too much because it is brutal and you don't want to get this thing whether you're young or not um, you know you, you're it's gonna make you suffer and it's gonna make you suffer for an extended period of time as I said I was not well for 10 days um, so it's like the most violent flu you've kind of ever had so I or at least I had certainly ever had um, and yeah I mean I had like my all my muscles that were completely clogged up I couldn't sleep, like I kept waking up in the middle of the night. I think I had like seven nights uh, in a row where basically I just wasn't sleeping well at all, um, which I know doesn't sound too bad, but it's nasty like when you're living through it for that many nights in a row. And um, you know, I had one morning where I could like barely get out of bed because all my muscles were completely clogged up. And yeah, it's nasty, like you don't, you do not want to get this and you do not like, I really remember the, the second night I remember waking up during the night and thinking like, I do not wish this upon anybody. Like this is so unpleasant. Um, so you don't want to pass it on to anyone. So you need to be responsible with what you do. Where did you get special tests uh, which you can send by post? How did you cope with anxiety? Yeah, so in my last video, I spoke about these tests that I was kind of being a guinea pig, I guess, in some way for to try and evolve um, you know, that technology to be able to have more home tests so people uh, can get tested in France. We're actually quite lucky, it's not too hard, but I think in like um, in the UK, it's a lot harder to get tested and, and stuff like that. So, so this is through um, your spit, basically. Uh, you can do a home test and send it back to a lab. Now, where do you get these tests? So I was actually working with a lab um, the guys who, who tested me positive and because uh, they need positive tests to kind of see how, wait, let me get the sun a little bit more so it's a bit less. So yeah, they wanted to get a positive test so that they could, you know, see if it was working, if their research was working basically. And yeah, so I you, right now you can't really get them, but hopefully that technology will evolve so that you can in the near future. Uh, as, as soon as I get an update, I'll let you guys know. I, I haven't had an update yet, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Hey, so I've been following you for years. Thank you. 
Goog789, thank you very much. What was the worst part of your COVID experience? Uh, if, I mean, it's not really a good part, so uh, uh, the worst part, probably like worrying about if I can like give it to anyone um, because I was super lucky, probably acted in a way which was beneficial to not passing it on to people where I just quarantined like the second there was any question that this I may be at risk but nevertheless like that was on holiday with a few people when I when I caught it and um, you know I was worrying about them their families because a friend of mine had then gone to see his whole family um, thankfully no one so everyone that I was in contact with between the time where we think I got it in a restaurant and the time that I self-quarantined I contacted every single person that I um, was knowingly in contact with and uh, thankfully no one came out positive uh, other than myself so that was really good but obviously you need to wait for a few days to get the answers so I think that period was really nasty like not knowing if someone else had gotten it through you because even if it's not your fault like it, it really is like luck of the draw in a way um, you know if you get it it's just unlucky you know you obviously some people take more risks than others but there's so a lot of people who take a lot more risks uh, without getting it than people who take very few risks and get it so it's hard to kind of know and so even though it's not necessarily your fault if you did everything you could you self-quarantine you still have that sort of level of guilt if someone were to get it and I'm super grateful I didn't have to go through that but there was a period of days where I was wondering about that and that was that was really unpleasant I had a slightly sore throat for a day or two now and it's turned to a a slight dry cough wondering if I'm overthinking look you maybe are but there's no harm in checking that's my theory like you may be overthinking it um, but you're gonna be stressing over the next few days weeks if you sustain this dry cough you know there is a chance at the moment there is this pandemic that that has something to do with COVID so if you're in a place where you can if you're able to trans you know get transport to go somewhere where you can get tested and if you can afford the test if it's not covered by your health insurance if those things are in place, then uh, definitely get tested if you can. And if they're not, uh, better safe than sorry, self-quarantine yourself until you no longer have those uh, symptoms. So that's what I would say. If you're like in any doubt at all, I think it's our duty and it's the least we can do is to take the steps of either getting tested or self-quarantining. Those are your two options and anything other than that feels a little bit wrong and out of place, to be honest. Again, like this is my view. I'm not going to try and impose things on, on you guys. This is my view on how we should react to this to be able to get through it all together. Um, but as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, uh, and I'm not trying to pretend to be. I'm just trying to give you my perspective. Fever and depressed. Two completely different things. I'll go one by one on those. Fever, I didn't really have a fever, actually. So that's why, for example, the last question, like I have a cough, even if you don't have a fever, it doesn't mean you're not positive. So I didn't have a fever. I think the highest I got was like 37.9 or something like that. So nothing too worrying. Um, I was tracking it all the time, but um, never, never had a fever. I never had a dry cough. Um, you know, I never lost my taste or my scent. I never had a lot of the classic symptoms. Um, so it just goes to show that everyone's body reacts. Sorry guys, my phone fell again. I'm sorry, I know you like deserve better effort put into these videos, but I just really wanted to make this video as quickly as possible to get the message out while everything was still kind of fresh in my head. Now, depressed, um, no, you know, thankfully, you know, first of all, quick thing on that, if it was the case, I would tell you, I would, you know, I, I, I think it's nothing to be ashamed of if you are going through depression and I think it's something serious and I think often talking about it, um, whether that's to a lot of people, to one person, to someone you know, or, or, or someone in therapy that's completely outside is nothing to be ashamed of. So I would probably actually tell you guys about it, but actually I've, um, I'm morally, mentally, I've been uh, absolutely fine. So thankfully that's been, that's been really nice and has made this whole period easier because whilst I wasn't feeling great physically, mentally, even though I've been here, I've been quarantined alone and been alone for yeah, 16, 17 days now. I haven't really minded it. I have great people around me, so I've been able to FaceTime, you know, and my parents who dropped me off, like my shopping and stuff, who I, I was so lucky happened to be in town for like three weeks during this period. So that was lucky timing. They would stand at like the front gate while I stood inside at the window and we would kind of talk like that. So I did have contact with people and um, reading through York and I, I'm not just saying this, um, you know, because it's like something you say when you're a YouTuber or whatever, like, oh, reading the comments means a lot, but genuinely like taking the time to go through, not just like some of the comments, but all the comments on recent things, um, videos, Instagram posts, 
uh, looking at emails, like going through Instagram DMs, like all that stuff has really kind of kept me there and, and giving me that contact with people, which has been great. So I think, you know, the advice I would give to someone in a similar situation is don't, you know, don't lie back too much and like, uh, you know, kind of dig yourself into your own hole. Like call your friends, they'll pick up the phone, they're there for you, communicate with people online, do things that you usually don't have time to do. Like I was out and I have a little, it's not really a garden, I have a terrace with a little bit of a few plants, like took care of those, cleaned up the terrace, ordered some stuff for the house that I've been wanting to do for ages. Like I did a bunch of things that I wouldn't have usually given me the time or the mental space to do. So that's kind of kept me sane, excuse me, but uh, yeah. So fever, nope, and depressed, uh, thankfully not either. But thank you for checking in. Just gonna adjust the sun again. Has this affected your job in any way? Like it has definitely, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> is the honest answer. Like two weeks off completely means no videos, um, which just, yeah, feels odd. Like feels weird not having made a video for a while and not having put anything out. But actually you guys, your support's been like great. I'm really happy you were super understanding of the fact that I couldn't put a video out. Um, so that, and then other work that I do alongside, it's definitely put things on hold. Um, I'm really lucky to have a great team around me on, on different projects who have kept the ball rolling on a lot of things. So that's been fantastic. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, for sure it's had an effect, both a negative effect in terms of uh, not being able to do too much work, but then also a positive effect in terms of um, being able to brainstorm and come up with new ideas and reflect on what was working and what we could improve on. And just taking the like a third person step, uh, point of view, like step back to reflect on things um, is a luxury that I don't get too often. So that was nice. What was the worst part? As I said earlier in the video, there's a similar question. Um, worrying about having contaminated. Contaminated, is that the word? It feels very serious, but worrying about having passed on COVID-19 to anyone else. So especially like I have my 92 year old grandma who lives here, who thankfully I did not see um, after I came back from holiday, but like you start overthinking so much. I was like, what if I've had this for two weeks and I didn't know and I saw her two weeks ago. So like you start overthinking things way too much. You know, my parents were, um, you know, in their sixties. So like things like that, you start really thinking about a lot. And uh, that was definitely the worst part. I had like one morning, which was, if you want to hear like worst part other than that, cause I guess I should probably elaborate, but uh, one morning where I didn't sleep like I basically couldn't get to sleep the whole night. I had like banging, banging, banging headache. Um, and I woke up in the morning and my muscles were so um, kind of swollen, like like completely just frozen, it felt like, that uh, I really struggled to get out of bed. And so I kind of like rolled, <laughs> a bit like that scene in Wolf of Wall Street, you know, like rolled to get um, uh, paracetamol and like stuff, because I really wasn't feeling well. So that was like not pleasant. But um, yeah. apart from that, uh, the rest you kind of just power through. As I say, I don't want to make it into a huge drama, but the rest was, you know, I was just being at home and not being well. I think we've all been through it at some point in different stages in our lives, so you can probably imagine. Last one, I'll do a last one. You guys sent a bunch of questions in, but last one is what's it actually like living with COVID-19? Very case by case is the conclusion I've come to through talking to different people and reading up about things. So my experience was that it sucked for about 10 days and um, I was drained and I was exhausted, but I didn't have any of the usual symptoms and I ended up kind of bouncing back from it fairly quickly. Like when I started feeling better, I kind of came back from it, but that it came in waves, kind of like two days not well, two days better, two days not well kind of a bit like that. So yeah, I mean, that was my experience, but then other people have either had no symptoms, they've been, you know, they've been tested and they had, were positive and they had, um, and they had no symptoms. But uh, then some people, you know, have been obviously in hospital and passing away from this. So it's a very case by case. So that's a tricky question to answer. Uh, that was the last question. One thing I do want to clear up that I spoke about in the last video was how I had a um, like little finger blood test done, which came out negative. And then I self quarantined myself before having the nose test done. Now, I didn't realize at the time, and I think it's important to use this platform to say it because I didn't realize at the time. So I'm sure there's other people out there who don't realize that that test um, is purely basically to see, and this is my understanding of it. Again, if I say anything wrong, I apologize, but my understanding of it is that it's to see if you've got antibodies. So if you have once been in contact with COVID-19. It won't necessarily tell you if you've got it at the moment at which you do the test, because often it takes your body a little bit of time to create those antibodies, even if you do already have uh, COVID-19. So when I did the test, 
I should have informed myself a little bit better. Thankfully, I self-quarantined anyway, so it didn't really have an effect. Um, but I'm sure there's some people who go and like me think that that is a test, um, which gives you your answer. You know, if you're negative, you're negative and you can go about with your normal life. Um, I just want to say that it is not. So if you do have symptoms and if you can in some way um, have the test through the nose done, which is unpleasant, I will give you that, but it's definitely worth the uh, unpleasantry to be able to know if uh, you risk passing it on to someone else or not. So if you can, that seems to be the most accurate one. Again, I'm sure, you know, there have been some times that it hasn't been fully accurate, but it seems to be the best option we have out there and the most accessible one. So if you have a doubt, do that one. The finger one will only tell you if you've been in contact with it before, which is a good thing to know anyways. Um, and yeah, and then go from there. Last thing I want to also say is once you have had it, it doesn't mean you're immune to it, is my from having researched this, my understanding is that you have the antibodies, so your body is maybe slightly more likely to fight back when you come in contact with it again, uh, if you come in contact with it again, but it doesn't mean you're immune at all. So you still need to be careful, and I'm still gonna be taking all those barriers. I'm of course gonna be wearing a mask. Uh, the mask seems to be kind of our, our best ally, even if not flawless in the fight uh, against this thing. So I'm definitely gonna be wearing the mask and social you know, distances of a meter, but or a meter 50 and whatever feels reasonable in different scenarios. But yeah, so it's not because you've had it that you can then go about and live your life because um, you know, fully normally without a mask and doing all that jazz because you're putting other people at risk despite you already having some form of an antibody in your in your body. So yeah, that those are a couple of things I want to say. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna and when you know I'm allowed to go back out, I am gonna go you know and and continue filming and do things like that. And I'm not gonna you know lock myself in. And I'm just gonna really be careful about wearing that mask and doing everything I can whilst still being able to kind of move forward and keep life going on despite this pandemic. But yeah, I just wanted to answer a couple of those questions. I hope that clears things up. Last time I'm gonna talk about this really, uh, we're gonna get back to car stuff now. So uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, apologize if I feels like I'm drooling on about this too long, but I think it's important information to put out there. And I think if you're lucky enough to have an audience, um, and a platform, you might as well use it, especially in a situation like mine where I've actually contaminated this COVID-19. So stay safe out there, be responsible, think of others and not just yourselves whilst taking care of yourselves as well. So thank you guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye. -bye.